are living in interesting times again, aren't we? And um, I'm just coming to you today, and today I am just going to chat with you. I'm not going to be teaching, I'm not going to be sharing something that I've prepared. I just felt that I needed to sit and have a conversation with you just about some of my thoughts about the things that have happened over the last few days. And But I just want to open in prayer. Father, I want to thank you that I'm just so incredibly reliant on you. I'm just so aware that <clears throat> without you, without your presence, without your purpose, without your love, without your glory, without your authority, without your power, without you, we are and we have nothing. And I want to thank you for just brooding over, over this chat today. And I want to thank you for revelation for those that are listening. In your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> well, friends, we are in a time again of load shedding and a time again of not knowing exactly what's happening as far as electricity goes. But that's why I wanted to chat with you today. You know, the last time that we had load shedding, our, lo our lights were switched off and they didn't come on again for 30 something hours. And uh, we sat in darkness. I have a, a garage that is electrically controlled. So when there's no electricity, I can't get out my garage. I can open it manually, but it's a very heavy door and it takes two people to open manually. So that becomes a problem when you live on your own because you can't open it manually. So the last time that this happened, that the lights went out, <coughs> excuse me, and we had hours of darkness and there was no water and there was a crisis. I really felt that, you know, I'm going to get really prepared for the next time and I'm going to make sure that I'm not caught off guard again. And so I went and I bought myself some torches that you can charge your phone on and you can charge the torches. And I bought electrical globes that you switch into your, put into your uh, light fittings. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then they charge as they're on. And then when the lights go off, they just stay on. And I bought another little thing that you could, it's a torch, but you can plug lights into it. It's got about three lights and it has a solar panel that it can it, it recharge itself. So, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> oh, take authority over this. Yeah, so I was well prepared. I thought, well, Kath, you fine. If this should happen again, you're going to be fine. Everything was in order. And we had load shedding on Monday afternoon at 6 o'clock. My lights went off and they didn't come back on again for about 28, 29 hours. And you know what, friends? It started pouring with rain. And so I was just praying, God, please don't let it flood again. Please don't let it flood again. I was praying for the areas where they had floods the last time. And just praying for the rain just to cease. And in the same time, the lights went off, but I was well prepared. I had all my lights going and everything was fine until it went past two hours, past three hours, past four hours. Eventually, everything died. And everything that I prepared so well no longer functioned and no longer worked. And the lights didn't work. The, the, the batteries had gone flat. There was no light. I couldn't solar charge it again the next day because it was raining. <coughs> And it was very frustrating and um and i just thought god this is ridiculous i've tried to be so well prepared and here i am again locked in my house can't get out no no wi-fi and um, my daughter's run out on my phone nothing's charged phone batteries flat this is ridiculous anyway long story short but it gave me lots of time to talk to jesus and that's exactly what i did and that's why i'm talking to you today because in the time of talking to Jesus, the first thing that he said to me is, he said, Kathy, this is very difficult for you, isn't it? And it's very uncomfortable. And I said, yes, it is. It's frustrating. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's ridiculous. Um, and immediately went to the fact that, well, isn't it ridiculous that we're in the situation in the country and all those thoughts, you know, the thoughts that we hear all the time on, on WhatsApp and on Facebook. <clears throat> and then God started speaking into my heart. And he said to me, you know what? With the increase of darkness, the, in, the decrease of my light is going to become very obvious until eventually I remove my light completely and it's all darkness. And he said, 
the living waters that is operating in the, on the earth today is my Holy Spirit. And the time is coming when I'm going to remove my spirit from the earth. <clears throat> and friends, as I was pondering on that, on the increase of darkness, you know, I got that revelation that where there is love, there's no hatred. But where love gets removed, there is incredible hatred. The very fact that there's any form of light and love and moral understanding and care for people and any form of, of heart concern for each other, the fact that there's any form of kindness and goodness and mercy is because the light of Christ is still in the earth. You know, he says, I am the light. He is love. The living waters is the Holy Spirit. But with the increase of darkness, friends, that's operating so increasingly over the world, we have to understand this. What we know is normal light, what we know is comfort, what we know is good. You know, it's, it's very easy when you walk into a room and you switch the light on and you put your curlers on and you boil the kettle and you do all those things. It's very easy. Why? Because somebody went ahead and prepared light and made it available. And it's the same in the world we live in today, friends. The very fact that there's law and the very fact that there is still your home, that's your place that is protected, the very fact that you can still love each other and care for each other, the very fact that there's still any measure of kindness and goodness in the earth, the very fact that there is any form of love, compassion for animals and for people is because somebody went before us and connected love in this world for us to walk into and to receive and to enjoy and that somebody was Jesus because Jesus went and laid him his life down so that we could live in the light and the fullness of the love of the father on earth but friends with the increase of darkness the bible says the love of most will go cold that light is being removed right now right now he says arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen on you see the darkness covers the earth the deep darkness the people but the glory has risen on you right now the light of Jesus is still operating in this world because friends, you and I are here because those that are full of light are here and it is our presence that is causing there to be any light whatsoever. The very fact that there is still a light operating that they can still put electricity through the conduits is because they're still connected. But friends, with decay and corruption and all these things, these connections will no longer be possible. And you just have to look in other countries where you see what was once an infrastructure has been removed. There is no infrastructure. And that is because those who established it weren't there to maintain it. Friends, Jesus spoke to me so deeply about what it will be like when the light eventually leaves. When the light is no longer available and when the water of the Holy Spirit is no longer available. And you know what it would look like, friends? Pure evil, pure hatred, pure terror, pure violence. Because man without God is evil. The Bible says folly is found in the heart of a child. That man without God is evil, cruel, self-centered, merciful, merciless. And, and we have to understand that we, the darker things are, the more corrupt things are, the more we are coming to the end of time, friends. And we get very uncomfortable because our might and our power, my might and my power, making all these plans so that I wouldn't be in that situation again, didn't work. Because it's not by might or by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. <clears throat> So many people are wanting to make all kinds of plans or how they are going to cope when things get really bad. Well, I can tell you now, you'll cope for a little while, but then it's not going to work anymore because you don't, you can't anticipate how long it's going to be. You have no idea of, of working out exactly what your needs are. The Bible says what you store up in this, in, in this world will rust and decay. That's what we store up in the heavenly realms. That's what's important. And I just want to read a few scriptures to you. You know, 2 Timothy says this in, in chapter 3. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful and proud. Now friends, aren't we living in that time? Isn't it the lover of self and the lover of money that causes corruption? 
Isn't corruption and greed connected with this terrible times? People will be lovers of self, lovers of money. They will live for themselves. Money will disappear. Why? What's happened to all the millions that was around there? What's happened? Well, people without light are living true to their evil character under the power of Satan. They are taking and it's all about me and we don't care about anybody else but friends we're not pointing fingers here because it is predicted this is the way it's going to be and i want to tell you friends i was prepared for maybe five or six or even eight hours but i wasn't prepared for 29 30 hours and we can be prepared for a little while but what are we going to do in the full blown when it gets worse and worse and worse you know malachi and Joel spoke about the great and dreadful day before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are living in those times now, friends. We're living in the great and dreadful day before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But Peter said they would be great and glorious. And why did he say they would be great and glorious days? Because Peter had had the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when he was covered by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he realized that no matter what the circumstances are, if you are full with the Holy Spirit, it will be great and glorious for you. Now, I want to say this to you, friends. The reason I felt just to chat with you today and to talk about what God spoke to me about in these hours of darkness was the fact that we cannot prepare ourselves according to our own understanding and we cannot prepare ourselves according to our physical needs it's going to get very very uncomfortable it's going to be in a place that those that had gone before those that had put things in place for us it's just not going to be available anymore and i'm talking about physically and spiritually it's talking about the time where the enemy is gaining ground it says a deep darkness covers the earth we are here to establish the light of christ but god's treasure as people and we are to reach as many people as we possibly can because by reaching people and by establishing the kingdom in them they will be prepared for the time to come friends now the bible warns us terrible times in the last days we're living in the last days how do we know that because um, uh, Matthew 24 is being fulfilled at a rapid rate because Israel has been established. It had to be established in 1948. That was a huge milestone. But there are many more things, terrible times. People are lovers of themselves. And friends, it doesn't matter how much corruption there is and it doesn't matter how much people are guilty of injustice and it doesn't matter what terrible things they do. No one cares. No one cares. Why? Because it is dark days, evil days, friends. It says here, um, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive. If ever it's been a time of abuse, it's now. I mean, look at the last three years. What on earth has happened to the world in the last three years? We've legalized that babies can be killed right up until after birth. We've had people come into power that are evil, wicked people with no moral standing whatsoever. We've had people in royalty that have been charged for, for abusing little children and hijacking and, and trafficking them. And yet it's just they're not behind bars. We've had people fighting for the rights of that which is evil. And it's okay. It just, it just passes by. People just forget how deeply evil things are. And tomorrow, the very things that were evil today become the heroes tomorrow. We've just had a principality change. The queen has just died and been buried. I want to tell you, friends, the new principalities in this world, controlling this world in a time such as this, are deeply, darkly evil. We had Chris Lum established by the Pope in the Roman Catholic Church. Was there an outcry against that? No one said a word. They fused religions. Everybody was okay with that. No one said a word. Suddenly, Catholic Church, Hindu Church, um, um, Islam can all be one. It doesn't make any difference. No one cares. What's going on? No one says a word. How deep is the darkness? We've just had two years of being violated and abused and having all rights taken away because people insisted that things were needed to happen for the sake of health that have not been proved at that point of time were trials every single person was a trial to their tests 
and the trials are coming back and it's disastrous. No one said a word. No accountability. Friends, it's a very sobering time. As I lay there in the darkness, listening to the pouring rain, praying for the flood areas, and God started talking to me about the fact that the very reason the world has been in some measure of control has been because his presence has been here. The spirit of God has been here. The light of Jesus has been here. There has been moral standards. There have been understandings of honoring older people and caring about older people. There have been the very foundations of the government of the kingdom of heaven have been operating in this world, friends. But as that starts shifting out the way, as we kick the Bible and the godly understanding out of the schools, which we've done, out of business, which we've done, out of parliament, as the standards of God, those things that have been established by the kingdom of heaven that have kept darkness at bay, that have stopped the enemy from running rampant, as that's been removed, friends, the enemy is doing what he wants and no one cares. But do we complain when our comfort zones have been shaken. Do we complain when we are not comfortable? Oh, we scream and shout. But we scream and shout because we don't have lights and we scream and shout because we don't have running water. But what's happening around us that's far more devastating than that? And Jesus is saying that the more the light disapp disappears, the more it's pushed out of the way, the more the increase of darkness is going to happen, friends. Are you ready? Are you ready? I want to read some scriptures to you. And people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents. There's no honoring. There's no honoring of parents. From, from little children in the school, they, they can have their own rights. A little child can decide which gender it is. Your children can be forced to watch all kinds of things at school and you've got no say. And then you wonder why they don't respect parents because parents' rights, authority, the very fact that God holds you accountable as being the ones before him, that's going to stand before him one day and is going to say, what have you done with his children? That's been discarded. Ungrateful. Unholy. Friends, the, the level of ungratefulness is ridiculous. Little children with televisions and iPhones and, and, and parents running at demand and, and, and being treated like VIPs when they don't even have the, the frontal lobe to make decisions for themselves. And then you wonder why they are ungrateful, unholy. There's no respect for the temple of their body unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control. You just have to look around and see the amount of ab 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 um, addictions and, and obesity and, and the way that we're treating our temples. Is we've got absolutely no self-control, being driven sexually. I mean, what has happened to humanity? They've disregarded and pushed aside the light, the love, the glory, the power, the respect, the honor, the peace, the kindness, the goodness, the mercy that the Spirit of God brings into the world, friends. Brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous. You know, they break into your house for your cell phone and they murder a family. What is that? Rash, conceited. If ever we were in a, a conceited society, look around you. People taking millions of photographs of themselves. What is that? At what point of time did you become the idol that you're going to worship? Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power. We can go to church for half an hour and sit there getting a, a message that makes you feel good. But the moment the Spirit of God starts moving, that's when they're not happy about it. Have nothing to do with them. Then it goes on to say... <clears throat> Um, in chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, for a time is coming when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers that say what their itchy ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and aside to myths. Friends, we're living in that time now where people called pastors or preachers are preaching the feel-good message. The message that says it's all about bless you, feel good, it's all about you. And it's not all about him. And we're living in that time where they don't want to hear the truth. And they don't want to hear the fact that God is holy. God is pure. That God is glorious. That God is powerful. That he is almighty. He's all powerful. 
that you come before and we've got to have clean hands and a pure heart, that we've got to allow him to transform us. No, they want the grace message, the bless me message that says I can do what I like, I can say what I like, I can live like I like, but I'm still going to be blessed. I'm still going to have everything I need and I'm still going to live in glory with him one day. It is a message that tickles ears, but it doesn't change hearts, friends. You know, God showed me that as with the increase of darkness, the increase of evil and wickedness and bloodthirstiness, the brutality, the rape, the murders, the cruelty, that it'll just increase, it'll just get worse, it'll be terrible. He, he showed me the fact that because there is no measure of right and wrong, there's no measure of stopping or self-control. People are behaving like animals. They're driven by lust. They're driven by, by their sexual desires and they do what they like. It's okay. It's okay to rape a child. It's okay to rape somebody else because it's your desires. Friends, the increase of darkness turns caring, loving people made in the image of God into animals. Because without the Holy Spirit, there's nothing more than a wild animal out of control. And God said this would happen, friends. Let's not complain because we see the evidence of darkness. Let's not complain because we can see people ruling out of the heart of darkness. Let's get into the presence of God and say, God, what are you wanting from me? How do you want me to prepare? Who do you want me to reach? Who is it that you're wanting me to turn to in this time? Because friends, this is the time to prepare yourself for the increase of darkness. This is the time to prepare yourself for the time when water, living waters will not be available and people will be living in the dry, dry, dry lands. This is the time to prepare yourself. And friends, ultimately, the time is coming where there will be no evidence anymore of anything that looks like and, and seems to be like God. And what will be left is the full, the full revelation of Satan, the God that they have been serving, controlling them. And you know what, friends? We look like, we get the countenance, we get the appearance of the God we serve. And where there is no evidence of a glorious, beautiful, loving God, the result is that people start looking evil, dark, deep, like the God they serve. And no wonder the enemy is trying to get so many people to change their appearance. He hates them looking like God. He hates the, the beauty of the light and the love. He wants them looking dark. He wants them looking like him. And unfortunately, that's what happens. We start looking like the God we worship. I want to read to you from, from uh, 2 Thessalonians, just a little bit here and there. 2 Thessalonians 2, it says, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our becoming gathered to him. So it's talking about uh, the time where the, where the Christians will be taken to the Lord. Um, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled and alarmed by some of the prophetic words. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For the day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. Friends, the darkness is going to get deeper and deeper. I'm telling you now, darkness is going to get deeper and deeper. Light is going to get brighter and brighter. And those that run to the light will receive more and more glory, more power, more authority, more of the fullness of God, the glorious day as Peter described. But those that are not in the light, it's going to get dark. It's going to get terrible. It's going to get deeper. And it says here, don't let anyone deceive you in any way for the day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. There is still a rebellion and it's already here. What is rebellion? Those that are rebelling against God. That I've just read to you now the terrible times in the last days, lovers of self, those that are living for themselves, rebelling against God. And if they're going to be under the power of the lawless one. And that is the Antichrist, the one that's got no law. Now, I want to ask you this question. Do you know what a world looks like where there's no law? Do you know what a world looks like where nobody is protected? Where you don't have your own boundaries? Where you can't call for help because somebody is destroying what is yours? There is no law. The law that is here is, is, the, is the law of the government of the kingdom of heaven. It, 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 it is in line with heaven. But friends, the one that is the lawless one is coming to rule. And the only law that he will establish is the government of serving him and what he desires and what he wants. Um, 
the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God. Everything that is light is being removed, friends. How deep is that darkness? Or is worshipped so that he himself, uh, he will set himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. You know, there's a lot of talk about the, the third temple being built in Israel and how they've just brought the heifers in, that the pure heifers that are, are coming in and now everything's established for the third temple. That third temple is being built for the Antichrist. He's the one that's going to establish himself there. Friends, watch Israel, watch Jerusalem, see what's happening there. He's the one that's going to lift himself up. We're already living in the terrible times. People are already lawless. There's already no accountability to, to living like you want to and getting away with literally murder. There is no accountability. And when somebody is caught, they put behind bars for a little while and then they let out for good conduct or they're just back on the streets within two minutes doing exactly what they've always done. It's going to get worse, friends. Um... Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who holds it back will continue to do so until he is taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth. So he said he's holding it back until um, he's been holding it back. How's God been holding it back? through those who love him, through those that are walking in him, and through the fact that up until now there's been order in the schools, there's been order in businesses, there's been order because the word of God, the book of life, the fullness of God has still been the government in those places. But friends, as it's been taken out of the way, it says here, um, but the one who holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. The word has been taken out of the way. And the more that it's been taken out of the way, the more evil is permeating our schools, our businesses, our countries, our governments. Do not be surprised, friends. Do not be surprised. Do not point fingers at the government. Do not point fingers at other people. Darkness is increasing. We have a responsibility in this time. And not to look around and say, oh me, oh my, I'm uncomfortable. But to say, God, with the increase of what I'm seeing happening, Physically, the demonstration for me was the fact that the lights are still going off and they're about to go off now. The lights are going off. They're going on. They're going off. They're going on. In the beginning, it was occasionally. Now it's more and more. And it's going to get worse because God said it's going to increase. The water is not reliable. Our water is contaminated in KwaZulu-Natal. Friends, it's going to get worse. We cannot rely on systems anymore because the systems have been pushed out of place. I'll read it to you again. But he, the one who holds it back, will continue to do so until he's taken out of the way. We are pushing Jesus out. And because we're pushing him out, out of our lives, out of our families, out of our schools, we have to understand these are consequences and the consequences is a deep darkness and as the darkness is getting worse friends rebellion is already here there's already the falling away from churches families that were dedicated and committed are no longer dedicated and committed families are no longer having family altars families aren't praying together you've kicked jesus out don't complain when you see the result of the corruption manifesting more and more and more and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with, overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders. Don't be impressed, friends, by signs, wonders, and miracles. We need discernment. What is God and what is not God? Unfortunately, not many people are walking in discernment and they're following doctrines of demons and they're following that which looks impressive and it must be God because it's spiritual. I want to tell you something. Spiritual does not mean it's God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit means it's God. And we've got to learn the discernment to see the difference. Um, display of all kinds of counterfeit signs, 
miracles, signs and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved. For that reason, God sent them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be um, condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. But then he says this, but we ought to always be we ought to always to thank God for you, brothers, loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God chose, chose you to be saved through the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. How do you know if you're serving God, you are being sanctified, ongoingly transformed into a mental holiness? That's what sanctification means. And through the belief in the truth, he called you to do this through our gospel, that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold on to the teachings we pass to you, um, whether by the word of mouth or by the letter. So, friends, we are living in the time where darkness is going to increase. And God spoke to me in the hours of physical darkness about the spiritual darkness that's increasing. We are living in a time when the water supply is going to be coming less and less. And he spoke about the time that in the physical times where water is being cut off and we can't trust our physical water supply because those who set it out and those who who laid it out for us originally have not been there to keep it maintained jesus set out and laid out the original light friends the light the love the truth the kingdom of god he brought it to earth for us to live by we are the ones that are meant to be maintaining that but friends the time is coming when the maintenance officers are not going to be very around anymore to do it. And he said that the Spirit of God is not going to be flowing as it is right now. But there is still an outpouring of the Spirit. And there's going to be an increased outpouring of the Holy Spirit just before the coming of Jesus. And friends, in all of this, as I was lying there in the dark, praying about the rain, praying that nobody would be in floods, praying that the water wouldn't be cut off again, sitting in a place where I had been well prepared so that I could go through hours of not having electricity and suddenly discovering I wasn't that well prepared because actually I prepared for a little while, but it took much longer. And you know what, friends? The Bible says in Matthew 24 that Jesus is coming back and he says that if, it, if he did not intervene, even the elect would, be, would not be able to cope. He was going to cut it short. People are expecting a little bit of difficulty, a little bit of tough time. I want to say to you, what if it takes longer? What if it takes longer than you thought? It's not by your might or by power, but it's by his spirit. And this is a time to drink deep, friends, to drink deep, to get your oil lamps full of oil. This is a time to prepare well. Friends, do not complain when you see corruption. Do not complain when you see darkness. Do not complain when you see money being stolen blatantly in our faces. Do not complain because there's no maintenance officers. Do not complain because the systems are breaking down. It is the result of the increase of darkness. Terrible times in the last days. What is our role in this time? Get yourselves ready. Get your heart ready. Friends, we're going to need each other more than ever. It says in Hebrews, <clears throat> do not neglect the gathering of believers, especially as you see the time coming to an end. We're going to need each other. We're going to need to draw from each other. We're going to need to help each other. You know, friends, I couldn't open my garage. I had to ask a friend to come and say, please, can you open the garage for me, with me? We need each other. Friends, we're going to need each other more and more and more. But you know what? We're not meant to be a little huddle bubble. They just looks after each other. We meant to reach out and get as many people into that light, into the revelation of the Holy Spirit, into the glory of God, into the fullness of what he's got for us. We've got to get ourselves so full, friends, that when the increased time comes and it's coming rapidly, we are ready. We don't know how long it's going to take under the control of the lawless one until Jesus comes. We don't know, but he says, just stand firm, stand firm, stand firm. And you know what, friends? It's difficult to cope. It's difficult to cope. When everything that's been a safe place is broken down and removed, it's difficult. It's going to get more and more difficult when our schools are places of horror, 
We've had terrible reports of what's happening as, as children are, are manifesting in schools because they're embracing witchcraft. That's going to increase. What are we going to do to make sure that the light gets brighter and more powerful? What are we going to do to prepare ourselves? How are we going to reach out to others? How are we going to help them to see? We are in preparation times. These are sober times, friends. Don't complain because you're uncomfortable. Get prepared. Because it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. The darkness is going to get darker. The evil is going to get more evil. The wickedness is going to get more wicked. Are we going to be frogs in a boiling pot? The water just warming up and we don't notice? Or are we going to open our eyes to see what's actually really, really happening? And make sure that we are ready, standing firmly, rooted on the rock of Jesus Christ. Make sure you know what good and evil is in your heart. Make sure you know what right and wrong is in your heart. Make sure you know what light looks like. Because friends, we're in a time where they call evil good and good evil. We're in a time where political spirits will convince you to, to be opposite and to stand against that which is unshakably, unshakably the word of God. Friends, this is the truth. What is recorded in here is the truth. And we cannot be swayed by political spirits that are rapidly increasing darkness because Jesus has been pushed out the way. Just because there's no standard in the schools, there's no standard in the government, there's no standard in business, does not mean you have to come into agreement with that which is evil, dark, destructive. What is the standard within you? Because the Holy Spirit writes the truth on our hearts, friends. And more than ever, the light of Christ has to be in us, so brightly shining, that people can be drawn to you as the light, the, the people that are there to maintain the electricity and the water supply haven't been maintaining it. And that's why we're in trouble. Friends, the world is in trouble. If those that are light carriers are not maintaining the light in the fullness of the light in a deep, dark world, that's you and me, friends. And I'm talking to you soberly today because Jesus spoke to me very soberly in the time that I thought I was well prepared. He said, Kathy, you are not well prepared. You cannot be well prepared because you don't know how long it's going to take. And no matter how well you think you're prepared, it's going to take longer than you think. And friends, I want to say to you today, in this message of just my life encounter over the last two days, unshakably get the Holy Spirit, the living waters inside of you. So that no matter what darkness looks like and no matter where the days go, you have got life-giving waters inside of you. Unshakably get the truth inside of you. You have to settle what is God and what is not God. And I'm telling you now that so much of what we are forced to come into agreement with, with political spirits telling us all kinds of things, and religious spirits speaking untruths. We have to know what the word is saying. We've got to know what the word is in our hearts. Friends, Jesus came and established the kingdom of heaven. Jesus came and established the word. The father created male and female. Principalities, doctrines of demons, evil spirits under the control of Satan are trying to remove everything that is light to give darkness full control have you got any idea what a world looks like where there's no love have you got any idea what a world looks like where there's no kindness where there's no goodness where there's no mercy where there's no self-control where there is no jesus that's where the world is going it's removing everything that's the fruit of the Spirit. It's removing everything that is Jesus. It's removing everything that is any form of humanity, love and care for each other. And it is establishing an animalistic, emotion-driven, flesh-driven people who care only about themselves, nobody else, and they don't care how they hurt others, how cruel they are, or how much blood is shed. Because it's only about the God of me. That's where darkness is going. We are the light. We are the light maintainers.
we are the water carriers we are the wing the ones that are carrying glory in the increase of the deepest darkness he said the light will get brighter until he gathers his people a day is coming where there will be no evidence of light and there will be no evidence of life and there will be no evidence of water and friends that is the picture of the epitome of the deepest darkness of hell the lawless one is going to establish himself in the temple the temple is completed it's been built it's already established one religion is already established the the, the um, world health organization is desperately trying to establish one health system that they controlling through finances and drugs one government is trying to be established one money system is trying to be established friends things are happening rapidly darkness is increasing but what does it look like if you take the light the love and the waters of the living water out of darkness what is left behind that's what god asked me and friends it was a dismal picture it was a scary picture it was a terrible picture and it's only because we're still here that it doesn't look like that already so friends i wanted to chat with you i would love you to read revelations 5 6 and 7 if you've got time read some more in 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 the in the letters that paul wrote to, to thessalonians and to timothy warning them about these times and telling them to get themselves prepared but more than anything i want to say to you beautiful friend we are living in a time where the light is still here we're living in a time where even though they've kicked jesus out more and more and more out of everything around us he's still in you and he's still in me and that's why people are not living in the fullness of the control of satan you here and so am i we carry glory we carry love we carry light let the light in you get stronger and brighter and reach out to as many as you can while you can god bless you until we meet again goodbye